Hi everyone, in this time lapse video I'm going to share a few tips and techniques for drawing white fur in pastels. Now this was a portrait I was asked to do last year and the dog is completely white. But although it is completely white and that one set colour, there are still quite a few colours and tonal values that I must make sure I capture. So my first consideration when I'm working on white fur is my base layer. Now as always, if you've seen other videos here on YouTube, you'll know that I put a lot of focus on the very first base layer. I think it is our foundation for our details, so I do want to make sure I've got it as accurate as I can to that reference photo. Even though this dog here being white fur, it's more minimalistic with how many tonal ranges it's going to have, you can still see a good variation. In the middle between the eyes, there is that darker midline. I want to make sure I capture that. If I miss these kind of shadows, it's going to completely change the look of this animal's face and then the end portrait will not resemble that animal as much as it should. Now my first biggest tip when drawing white fur is depending on the reference photo you're working from, don't make your base layer too dark. Although we have the ability to work from dark to light with our pastels, that's the one main benefit of them compared to other mediums such as colour pencil, there are certain instances where that white fur needs to maintain that bright colour. You don't want to therefore go down with a really dark base layer because you end up then making the fur look more grey rather than white. And because this is one of the more challenging elements when working on white fur, I have got a couple of dedicated tutorials on Patreon. One of which is more of a longer haired white cat. So you've got the short white markings on the face and then you've also got the longer white fur on the body. But then I've also got a white bulldog. That's obviously significantly shorter fur on the face, but it's got crease and wrinkles there where that fur direction is going to change and shift in many different instances. So if those or any of my other slower tutorials on Patreon are of interest, I will link that in the description below. My other tip for this is you'll notice that when I am putting the base layers down and I start with my pastel pencils, I'm not always going in with my whites first. Usually I save those for my last layers. I still want to be building up the fur here gradually. Just because white fur, we think of that as being one colour, it really isn't. You can see here's a prime example. I'm using an awful lot of pinks. Because this dog has short fur, being a Staffordshire Bull Terrier, the pink of the skin is going to show through in some areas. So I really must make sure that I capture that. What I want to do, one big tip for that though, is as you can see here, I'm adding the pink in at my base layer stage. I'm not drawing in the pink with pastel pencils on top because then that fur will look pink rather than white. Whereas by putting down the pink pigment first and then layering your white and lighter pencils on top, you're then showing that the pink skin is underneath but the white hairs are on top. So one easy mistake to make when drawing white fur is that we feel like we don't therefore have to add as many layers because it isn't something like a brindle dog for instance with multiple colours. Whereas that is really not the case. I spend far more time on white fur than usually anything else. Because there are so many subtle variations within that fur, if we don't get those in, the fur will look very flat. Now that we've got more of the face in, you can really see how the grey shadow and the subtle variations within and under that base layer are really pushing through now that I'm starting to build my lighter layers on top. If you are drawing a dog like this and they have these darker pink or black pigmented spots, make sure that they're in the right place. That's really important. This is unique to that one animal. So the owner there, if it's a pet portrait, are going to know when these markings are not in the right place. And obviously we want to go for as close to that reference photo as we possibly can. Something else that I talk about on pretty much every single video is the highlights and shadows. The positioning of these highlights and shadows are not random. So for instance, if you look at the highlight above the eye there, that is only subtle, but it is indicating that that is the top of the eye socket. You've then got the mouth where you've got the darker shadows creasing up there. That's going to help to show that here he is panting. He's got his mouth open. So these darker shadowed creases are helping to follow the anatomy of his mouth and the face shape. If I make these shadows or highlights too straight and they're not curved, it's really going to affect what that animal looks like. And this is something, again, that is so, so important. The highlights and shadows are never random. They do follow that underlying bone and muscular structure. So the reference photo that I was provided for this portrait wasn't the best in terms of the detail. It was quite pixelated, so I did have to add fur detail where I couldn't see it in the photo. But the one reason why we opted to use this one 
was because of that beautiful lighting and now that I've got that tongue in place you can really see how much that is emphasized here. The highlights are nice and bright but the shadows especially on the base of the tongue and the red dark rose magenta color at the end of the tongue that sharp contrast there makes this look three-dimensional. So when it comes to the gum area on any portrait it's really crucial to get those highlights within the wet area of the mouth in the right direction. If I make these highlights too horizontal and really flat, it's going to make this part of the mouth look incredibly wide. Obviously, again, I don't want to do that. We want to be making sure that our proportions and our perspective are accurate. And it can be as such as one of these highlights or shadows in slightly the wrong angle or position that can really throw off that portrait. So I really enjoyed working on this portrait. I do have two Staffordshire Bull Terriers myself, so I really love seeing them on the easel. I hope the tips and techniques that I've shared here are useful. If you've got any questions about drawing white fur or anything else art related, pop them in the comments below. I'm more than happy to help if I can. If this video was useful, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up because it really does help. And if you'd like to get notified of future content, hit the subscribe and the bell button. If my slower Patreon tutorials are of interest, they're both in pastels and also acrylics. I will link that in the description below as well. I'm going to be uploading another video to YouTube very soon. And as always, thank you so much for watching.